Okay. All right, so 7.2. So remember, there are four ways to solve a system of equations. First way, class, graphing. You just did it last night, right? Graphing. Second way is called the substitution method. Third way is called the elimination method. And the fourth way is matrices, right? Using a matrix. So we got to get to that second method. And remember, each of the methods has its advantages and disadvantages, and so we need to learn them all. We'll learn three of them in Algebra 1. We'll get the matrices in Algebra 2. All right, so this is solving by substitution. Solving the system by substitution is a mathematical method. Now, look, we could graph them, but we want a mathematical method of finding that Finding the what? What goes in the blanks? When you solve a system, what are you always looking for? The point of intersection. So it's a mathematical way of finding the point of intersection. That's what it's all about. Don't lose sight of point of intersection. It's all about the point of intersection. It's all about the point of intersection. All right, the, the substitution property is very, very simplistic. Um, you know, if you've played any kind of organized sport, whether it's, you know, here at the school or, a, you know, a club team or a county team or whatever, if you're on the bench, what do you want the coach to do? They want, they want the coach to put you in, right? Which, what's another way of saying put you in? Sub you in, right? I think soccer, they yell sub, sub. In basketball, we send them to the table, right? And then the table doesn't buzz, and the refs still don't want to let them in, and then we yell sub. All right, you want to get a substitute into the game. That's the substitution property. So it's really simplistic. It goes like this. Use your red here. If A equals, and then I'll in green put a B. If A equals B, then B can replace A. You could also say A could replace B. If two things are equal, they can replace each other in a mathematical statement, and nothing changed. Don't write this. But, you know, if I had um, X plus Y equals 12, and let's suppose X equaled Z, can I, where the X is, stick a Z and have it still be true? I can. Nothing changed in the value. Nothing of the value has changed because they're equals. Now, this is simply the substitution property, and it works real well, and it's the principle of solving by substitution. Well, where we have to get to is to understand a little bit of the format. So look at this first example. In this case, the A is an X. And the B is, what is the B? Y. What is the B? Y. What is the B? Y. Go with the color. The A is the X, and the B is the Y plus 2. There's a little bit more to the B than meets the I, right? Doesn't the red X equal the green Y plus 2? Yes? All right. Now, before I go any farther, there are an inf... You don't need to box that. I'm just trying to center your thought here. There are an infinite number of solutions to 4y equals 3x plus 1. And the reason is this thing is a line. And remember, every point along the line are the xy values that make the equation true. There's an infinite number of them. So there's all kinds of solutions for this thing. Well, we can sub in and narrow this thing down or solve it in actuality for y. So watch what happens. Let's call for a sub. Coach calls out a sub. So I still have the 4y. I have the equals. I have the three, and what do we always do when we have a sub? I told you guys to always put a parenthesis where that variable is. So right now I have in black 4y equals three parentheses 
plus 1, and what, of course, is going to go into the parentheses? What the x equals, the y plus 2. All right, let's continue on. I have 4y equals, we all know to distribute, right? 3 times y is 3y. And then that 3 times positive 2 is a positive 6. We now have 4y equals 3y plus 6 plus 1. Let's continue solving. So somebody tell me what's the next step. Let me raise your hand. What is the next step? Come on. Participate when you can. Get, get answers when you can. Nick? No. I mean, you could, but let's, we're, let's speed things up a little bit. And you could, Nick, so I, I shouldn't say no. But let's be a little bit more efficient. Josh? Don't want to divide. Don't want to divide. Kaylin? Yeah, you want to get all your variables on one side of the equal sign, right? That's what you do when you have variables on both sides. you got to get them all on the same side. So we would add a negative 3y to both sides. Would you agree? And, Nick, here's why I said don't add the 6 and 1 yet. Because now on this step, we'll add them up, right? So the left becomes y and the right becomes 7. It's just a little bit more efficient. So you weren't wrong. It's just a quicker way to do the problem. And we end up with y equals 7. Hey, look. We got a solution. We know the value of y. y is 7. And we found that value of y by calling for a sub. We're able to substitute in the value and figure out that our y in this situation is 7. Okay, Because what we have is a system of equations. We have a left equation, 4y equals 3x plus 1. We have a right equation x equals y plus 2. We just found the y coordinate of 7. I know this thing, they intersect when the y is 7. Now, I don't know what the x is yet, but I do know the y. I know the y is 7. I'm one step away. i got to find the x, and that's what we'll learn when we do the full procedure. So to start it out is to be able to sub in to get one of the variable solutions. Then actually we'll sub a second time and find out the value of x. That's what it's all about, and that's how it works. All right, so let's see if we can write something here. So number two. When solving a system of equations by substitution, it's important to make a wise choice in determining which equation which equation to solve for which variable <clears throat> when solving a system of equations by substitution <clears throat> it's important to make a wise choice in determining which equation to solve for which variable all right these are the little things that make life easy on you or difficult so pay attention to detail as we try to as we try to figure out how to solve it the best way, the easiest way. Okay. What did that statement mean? In our opening example, oh, I hate when it does that now. In the opening example, this second equation is already solved for one of the variables. Great. It's already for the substitute. In most cases, that's not already the case. And so you'll see that here in the next step. Driving me crazy. All right, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. So we're going to do some examples and see if we can learn how to make the wise choice. So for A through D, choose which variable to solve for. Now we have four choices. There's a black X and a black Y. There's a blue X and a blue Y. We could solve for any one of those four variables so that we are then ready to make our substitution. We need to choose the easiest one. There's four possibilities. In this example, one is definitely by far the easiest. 
So we need to make a wise choice. Black X, black Y, blue X, blue Y. Now again, what are we doing? We've got to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. That's the first step in solving by substitution. And before you just recklessly just go solve any equation for any variable, look at it first and determine what's the best choice. Okay. So you look at the black X, black Y, blue X, blue Y. If you had to solve for one of those variables, which one would be the easiest to move everything else to the other side? Because isn't that what it means to solve? Get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign? So it is, is it easiest to get the black X on one side and everything else on the other? The black Y on one side, everything else on the other? The blue X on one side, everything else on the other? Or the blue Y on one side, everything else on the other? On three, I'm going to ask you for your choice. All right. You're going to say black X, black Y, blue X, blue Y. Got it? Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Okay, I heard a lot of black Y. I heard a few black X. The best choice by far is the black Y. It is the black Y. You might say, why, Mr. Scarfy? Because it's one step. If I add a negative 3x to both sides, am I not already solved for y? It was one easy step. And I'm solved for y. Now, again, you can do the problem with choosing something wrong here, but you're going to start pulling your hair out because you have fractions and nastiness. But you could do it. But you want to make the wise choice. All right? You want to do it the best way. Let's look at the second example. All right, so again, we got a black and a blue equation. Black X, black Y, blue X, blue Y. Make a choice. Black X, black Y, blue X, blue Y. On three, give me your answer. One, two, three. Blue X, definitely, right? Because again, that negative 5y easily moves to the other side by adding a positive 5y to both sides, right? Wow, boom, we're already solved for x. And now we've got what we're going to sub in and we're ready to roll. All right, third one. Here, let me get rid of my shade so I can go higher for you. Third one, black x, black y, blue x, blue y. Black x, black y, blue x, blue y. All right, on three, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, this one's not the greatest, but black x is the best. Would you agree I would add a negative 5y to both sides? And then how do I get from negative x to positive x? I would then change the sign of everything on the other side, right? So that's not too hard. That wasn't too bad. I would add a negative 5y to both sides, and then I would change the negative on the left and change the sign of everything on the right. Okay, not too terrible. And therefore then, of course, for D, the obvious choice is blue y, right? Blue y is easier because it's positive and the x is negative. That's how you got to start if you're going to solve by substitution. That's got to be your starting point. Okay, now let's look at the full-fledged operation. Solve each system of linear equations by substitution. Okay, so your first choice has to be, do I want to solve for blue x or black x, black y, blue x, blue y? Your choice is... Black X. Great choice. So again, I you don't need to show this step, but technically you're adding a negative 3Y to both sides. I don't need you to show me that step anymore, though. You should end up at X equals... By the way, don't worry about the order. It doesn't matter. Just in the back is easiest. I'm just going to leave it 19 minus 3Y. I always circle this. That's a little thing, but it helps a lot. I always circle that. A little thing, but it helps a lot. Okay. So we've got x equals 19 minus 3y. 
That's the first step. Now we have a sub prepared. Our sub is ready. Our sub is where the X is in the blue one, we can stick in 19 minus 3Y. So we just prepared our sub. Now we need to make our substitution. So now take your blue one, where the X is, put your parentheses. All right, so you have four parentheses, minus 5Y equals negative 26. And now sub in your 19 minus 3Y. So you prepared your sub, and secondly then, you sub it in. So I'm going to come over here and write number two. Sub in 19 minus 3Y for X in the blue equation. Or I could have said in the other equation. Sub in 19 minus 3Y for X in the blue or the other equation. That's the second step. Okay, what would you think I do next? Kirsten? Uh, yeah, to, to end up doing what? Why would I distribute? What am I after? Why would I distribute that four I'm after, Andrew? Okay, I'm after isolating the value. I'm going to solve this equation. So the third step is now solve the equation. All right, so Kirsten is correct. We've got to distribute. 4 times 20 is 80, but it was only a 19, so I'm 4 less. So that's a 76, right? 4 times negative 3y is a negative 12y. I still have a negative 5y. It still equals a negative 26. Do you concur? Okay. So let me pause. <clears throat> We first had to figure out what's the best one to get a sub. Which variable is the best to figure out its substitute? And the answer was black X. So we figured out its sub. We then subbed it into the other equation. And now we're going to solve this equation. All right, so look, it's algebra. We're halfway through the year. We've gone through pre-algebra. Hopefully we can speed up a little. The y's is a negative 17y, do you agree? And a positive 76 on the left ends up being a what on the right? A negative 76. So again, if you can't handle it in your head, you know, again, we're adding a negative 76 to both sides. And so a negative 26 and a negative 76 is a negative, what is that, 102? And that's an equal sign, by the way. So we end up with negative 17y equals negative 102. All right, we all know to finish this, we're going to divide by negative 17, right? And again, you would just grab your calculator and you would hope that you get a whole number answer. Otherwise, it's a pain. And almost always, we're going to give you a problem where you get a whole number answer. So believe it or not, 102 does divide by negative 17. So go ahead and punch that out, brothers. Punch with care. Punch in the presence of the passengers. Eight cents for uh, something, something fair. Something cents for uh, something fair. Is it an even number? Yep. What do you got? Six. Six. Awesome. Great. Nice. Sweet. Okay, we found Y again. I know why. Do you know why? I know why. It's important to know why. Why are we here? We know why we're here. To glorify God, right? All right, so Y equals 6. Am I done? What is the solution to a system of equations? Say it if you know it. 
What is the solution to a system of equations? Say it if you know it. How soon you forget. What is the solution to a system of equations? The point of intersection. We're after the point of intersection. Is y equals 6 a point of intersection? No. It is the y coordinate, though, of the point of intersection. Therefore, we are missing the x coordinate. So we need to find x. How in the world are we going to find x? How are we going to find x? How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Say it if you know it. Just talk. We can sub the 6 into, what do we sub it into? Oh my. Do we sub it into the black one? Do we sub it into the blue one? Where do we sub it? I don't know. What? Which one do we sub it into? The black, the blue? What do we sub it into? Any ideas? You're correct. We sub it in. Where? Where? Black one? What if people like blue better? Can we do the blue one? Can we do the blue one? Can we do the black one? We can do either one, right? What's the best one? What's the most efficient one? What black one? The black one in the circle. You know why we circled it? Because it is by far the easiest way to finish and get the second answer. So number four, sub in y equals six in the circled black equation. In the circled black equation. By far the easiest way. So again, I'm going to use a line here. Got x equals 19 minus 3, and where the 3 is, I put a parenthesis, right? Isn't that how we sub? Coach, we need a sub. All right, let's put 6 in. 6 is going in for y. Why? Because 6 is needed right now. Probably y is in foul trouble. Y is an idiot. Best player on the team, but hacks away. How many fouls do you get in basketball? Five. So, so why, though they're a great player, they're an idiot, they're going to take themselves out of the game. Does coach want them out of the game? No, coach doesn't want them out of the game. Coach wants Y in the game. Y is the best player on the team. We need Y to score. We need Y maybe even to handle the ball. But Y is an idiot, has no self-control, and hacks everybody. What an idiot Y is. Why you're an idiot. Now we got to put six in. And 6 ain't as good as y. Now, thankfully in math, they're equal and we're good. By the way, I slipped in a little bit of basketball sense for you guys. If you're the best player on the team or you're important to the team, you are a fool to lack self-control and hack and reach and pick up fouls because you only get five of them. And... Most coaches will only get two in the first half before they pull you out. And in the second half, you get three right away, you're coming out. And when you get four, you're coming out and waiting until the end of the game. So, all right, anyhow, get off my basketball. So what do we end up with? 19 minus 18. X is uno. Awesome. Are we done? No. Somebody tell me how to finish. How do I finish? How do I finish? Finish it off. Our solution is a point of intersection. Finish it off. What's the final answer? One comma six, right? Our final answer is a point of intersection. We are there. Now I've got to break your heart. I went slower than I wanted to, but it's probably good. So I know this is going to really tear you up. Can't give you homework tonight. Want to pay attention though here, real quick. Quiet, please. We're still going to have a quiz tomorrow. So so far, we've dealt with graphing. 
listen now, we've dealt with the types of solutions, consistent, independent. Stop. Everybody look at me because you're not listening. That's very foolish. We, we dealt with um, consistent independent, consistent dependent, inconsistent. We dealt with parallel lines being inconsistent. We dealt with how to write the solution in those three situations. We dealt with whether a point is a solution or not. And we dealt with graphing. All of that will be on the quiz tomorrow. Might I ask you something about what we did today? Sounds like a good bonus question. Okay. But focus on what we did yesterday and get that stuff down pat. All right. You can now pack it.